This is episode 22 of Spiritual AF with Pixie Rose, the podcast for people going on their spiritual journey, knowing that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Before we get into this episode, I wanted to share with you that I am now a bombshell ambassador with Beauty by BB skincare range. This skincare is so completely aligned with my values in every way, plus my skin has never felt or looked better. So I am so excited to share this vegan, eco-friendly, no-tox skincare range with you. So check out my shop in the show notes to get your hands on these beautiful products. You will love them. Welcome to episode 22. I'm Pixie Rose and this is part two of my healing journey. So again, if you probably best to listen to episode 21 before this one, but there is a little trigger warning because I do discuss a lot of my healing has been around sexual assaults. So as I mentioned in the previous episode, just just warning you that I do discuss that in, in a few ways, more so around the healing that I experienced rather than the trauma itself. But if you do get triggered by this discussion, this is probably a wonderful opportunity to reach out and, and get this healing because in my most recent quantum healing session with a client, she was amazed at how she was able to tell her story without becoming emotional and without having those, those trigger responses from her trauma. And I've always said that this is a good way to, sh- to see how you have healed from something. If you can get to a point where you can just tell your story and it was just something that happened rather than making it mean something and and having these emotional reactions to these experiences that you might have had. So the next healing modality that I wanted to discuss is eye gazing. So I had my first eye gazing experience at Seven Sisters Festival in Melbourne one year. And this was after I had my son and something that I experienced through this becoming a mother for the first time was I kind of lost my sex drive and I really struggled to feel sexual because I was a mother, if that makes any sense. And I know that a lot of women do experience this. A lot of mothers have this experience of not feeling sexual. So I was at Seven Sisters Festival and there's lots of different workshops going on and all these different things. And I remember looking at the timetable and looking at a workshop thinking, yeah, I'd love to check this out. And I was talking to my friends who I was there with and they, you know, they all said, oh yeah, I want to go to that workshop as well. So I let them sort of lead me the way to you know because they said they knew where they they were going they had been there all weekend and I was just there for the day and so they led me to what I thought was the workshop that I was interested in and when I sat down it was women talking about really sexual topics and and I remember sitting there thinking this is not the workshop that I was wanting to sign up for like there's no way that I would have signed up for that at that point because it wasn't something that I was looking at improving I was quite content in a way of not feeling sexual but obviously divinely I was placed there and I had quite an interesting experience throughout this so I wish I could remember exactly the workshop and who to credit but as I said I did not expect to be there so more or less the topic was around orgasm and experiencing this orgasm pretty much on your own but also as like a tantric experience so we were paired up with another woman and we had to look into each other's eyes 
which I used to find very, very confronting. And especially at that point, I was, I found just looking into this woman's eyes, very confronting and to be so fully seen for her to be looking in my eyes. I remember really struggling to, to maintain that eye contact. And what we had to do was we had to sort of hold hands and do this hand movement as well as this breath work. And in the workshop, you were meant to have an orgasmic experience. Now, I did not have an orgasmic experience. I remember being surrounded in a room of 100 people, 100 women. And yeah, it was it was pretty wild. But yeah, as I mentioned, I did not have an orgasmic experience, but it was a very profound experience because I just realized how lost that side of me was, how blocked I was in that area. And I just remember crying. And a big thing about crying is like there's a, there's a need to release. So I just released all of this emotional blockage, you know, around my sacral chakra and just, yeah, I just remember it feeling so powerful. And then since then, I've done lots of different eye gazing activities, different tantric workshops, and eye gazing is something that I quite enjoy doing now. But as a healing experience, if you haven't tried that, it was pretty powerful for me. Mother circles or women's circles are so healing and so nourishing. I mentioned mother circles in particular because most of my healing occurred after I became a mother. There was so much inner child healing and stuff that came up around my own relationship with my mother. And my first mother circle was so profound and it's something about sitting in circle and being able to be vulnerable, being able to be seen and heard and it's just so powerful and so healing. I love women's circles so much and throughout sitting with these other mothers, I was able to really heal, you know, begin that healing of healing my relationship with my mother I had this message while sitting in circle or doing a meditation or something to that extent. And this message came through to me that I am my mother. And I just remember that feeling so powerful. And again, like this releasing feeling. Again, there was this sense of not wanting to address that, but then it coming up very naturally. And instead of pushing against it, I really opened up to that healing. So mother circles are incredible. I think I've mentioned journaling possibly in that last episode, but I'll, I'll mention it again because journaling is so important and everyday journaling is powerful as, as a form of reflection. A lot of us are having thoughts throughout our head throughout the day, throughout our whole day, throughout the night, trying to meditate and trying to stop the thoughts coming. But honestly, just thinking isn't necessarily an ideal way to reflect. There's a real power and a deeper understanding of yourself and your experiences. When you put that pen to paper and when you yeah, reflect on what's going on, what, how you're feeling, I've had so many realizations through journaling. And I've definitely journaled on different, I guess, themes or topics. So I've done lots of gratitude journaling. And yeah, gratitude is something that's massive for me. And again, has been so healing in lots of ways. And I've mentioned that on the podcast before. So I've focused my journaling on gratitude. I've focused my journaling on manifestation I've focused my journaling on mindfulness. There's so many different, you know, self-love could be another one. So many different things that you could focus on to keep that journaling interesting, I guess. But that reflection modality is so powerful because when we come to our own realizations, that's so much more powerful and healing than someone else telling us 
what we're doing or what they're seeing to bring light to our blind spots on our own is incredible. And I don't know if that's fully possible if journaling's not happening at all. Forgiveness practice. So I did this after I left my husband. So while we were separated, while I was pregnant with my daughter and a friend suggested for me to try it because I was angry at a lot of people. I was angry at my husband. I was angry at my friends and my family and my mother. But most of all, I was was angry at myself. So I did this forgiveness practice and this involves writing a letter and just writing a letter of how you're feeling and what you're unhappy about and you know just getting it all out onto the table but most of all really feeling into forgiving the situation finding forgiveness within yourself and writing these letters to people i didn't send any of my letters to anybody because for- forgiveness is not about anyone else it is about yourself and it's letting go for yourself But the biggest part of that practice for me was the letter that I wrote to myself. And I realized I placed a lot of the responsibility on me. And in actual fact, a lot of that was my responsibility. And they were my lessons to learn. And I really forgave myself for making mistakes. I just remember being so emotional, crying so much while I just poured my heart out to this letter to myself and I just, yeah, let it all go. And the thing with forgiveness is you might have to do it more than once. It might not just be something as simple as, you know, you write a letter and you're done. You might have to write another letter and then maybe a month, six months, a year, have to write another letter. I wanted to mention the healing that I received through my twin flame journey. And this is not something that I've mentioned on the podcast before because the twin flame journey is so big that this is definitely a whole episode and I'd love to get someone on to really unpack it because I do believe that there's a lot of misconceptions around twin flames and even Throughout my experience, I learned so much, but I met my twin flame when I was in Egypt. Part of that meeting was also before the meeting was we were energetically connected and I knew that I would meet him in Egypt. So part of the healing that I received from my twin flame was meeting in general having that physical meeting and connection and finding each other in this lifetime so that is the healing within itself within the twin flame journey there's a lot around union within the twin flames but another part of that healing for me was I was dealing with a lot of that sexual trauma from my from the assault that I experienced the year or two before that before I before we met. So I was really working on healing that. That was sort of the biggest thing in my life that I was really struggling with getting past. So I felt really unsafe. I f- felt especially around men I felt really unsafe around men and again I was struggling with my sexuality because of that but something really powerful that happened between me and my twin flame and this isn't necessarily what all twin flame journeys are going to entail this was something very specific to our personal situation I believe But it was kind of the first experience that I'd had where I was able to be physically close with someone and share a bed with someone and feel that intense, beautiful connection and for them to not make it sexual. So a lot of people talk about how, you know, twin flames are, you know, romantic and the sex is crazy and all of this and that. 
what was really powerful for me was not having sex. And I got so much healing from that. It was really quite incredible. But yeah, definitely more into that on in other episodes. So psychic readings can actually be quite healing and can be an activation of some kind as well. But the first ever psychic reading that I received was actually around some suppressed memories that I couldn't access, obviously, because they were suppressed. So I got my first reading and part of my questions and part of what I wanted to know was, did certain things happen to me as a child? Because I couldn't remember, but yet I had this this feeling and obviously this this healing that I needed to do and I couldn't quite understand why I had that healing. Why did I feel traumatized in lots of ways? Why did I feel unsafe? I didn't understand why. And then being able to have access to those memories and especially in that form because I still don't have those memories. It was just literally someone telling me that this is what happened to me and having that knowing was helpful for me because it wasn't a question anymore it was like okay these things did happen and and now I'm going to work on healing it so psychic readings can definitely be healing and be activating in lots of ways I've done a lot of inner child healing so a lot of my inner child healing was doing the Louise hey you can heal your life work and the affirmations that she does So I actually used to listen to this audio CD in my car. So it was after my son was born and I used to drive around in the car to get him to sleep. And when he was asleep, I would put on this Louise Hay Affirmations CD. And part of that, the affirmations that I really struggled with was, I love my parents and my parents love me. That was really hard to say. And I just didn't believe that for so long. But in focusing on this inner child, Louise Hay also has stuff around in, me- in a meditative practice, like going back and visualizing yourself as a child and giving your- yourself a hug when you're a child. And then also doing the same thing with your mom or your dad, visualizing them as a child and showing them love and forgiveness. And, you know, they were once this, this perfect little child And they needed love too. And being able to give them that throughout a meditation, I found really special and was so helpful for me in dealing with my inner child healing. I've done a whole episode on affirmations. And again, those affirmations were pretty powerful for my inner child healing, but also within self-love in general. So just just loving myself, especially again after I became a mother, you know, my body changed quite dramatically and I struggled with loving these new parts of myself and this, you know, this new body that I had after after giving birth. So using affirmations has been really great for me. I believe it's very important to heal and balance your chakras so I do this throughout my coursework but I love doing chakra healing using essential oils and this is something I do want to explore and share more information about because there is a lot of conflicting information about this but I loved using oils and I found it really powerful to hold the intention and also that there is something within the you know aromatherapy and the the smells and and everything the healing makes sense to me so focusing on each chakra for me my root chakra was often imbalanced and my throat chakra was quite imbalanced as well and it's pretty much only been maybe this year that I've really got a handle on those chakras in particular sometimes that healing is is really quite a journey this as with most of all this healing like it's not like you just do one thing and it's done and dusted it it really is a journey 
mirror work has been really great and powerful for me. Um, just looking at yourself in the eyes, looking at your whole body, practicing that self-love, telling yourself that you that you love yourself. I love you. I wanted to briefly mention mushrooms and magic mushrooms. I experimented with this when I was younger. What I got was it actually that that state of mind actually showed me what I thought about myself. So the first thing that I experienced when I used mushrooms was it felt like there was a magnet and it was drawing me to the corner of the room. And I just felt like I belonged in the corner of the room. And then at one point I sort of slipped off the couch and was just sort of laying on the floor. I didn't feel like I was on the floor. I felt like I was the floor. And I felt like people could just walk all over me. And I do remember after that experience, I felt very low. And upon reflection later on in life and talking to other people, I, th- I believe that I felt so low because I was waking up to what I really thought about myself and what I was allowing at that point in my life was I felt like I belonged in the corner of the room And I felt like people could walk all over me. And having that realization, I could start making changes in my life. So, of course, I've done whole episodes on this as well. But meditation has been really powerful and healing for me. I've got a whole episode on how how meditation cured my anxiety. So if this is something that you want to heal, like that particular issue with anxiety, go back and check out that episode. And I've also been having some amazing experiences doing unconditional love meditation. So really, really feeling into that heart space and that self-love through meditation. I wanted to mention animal therapy. Animals are so healing in so many ways. And there are people that offer healing with horses and you can go and spend time with horses and there's a real self-love and healing that comes through that. I've definitely experienced some healing and loving energy through my cats. I've always had cats and and yeah, it feels amazing just to have that feline for me, that feline presence in my home and to be connected with them. And their unconditional love, you can really feel that. And we can learn so much from animals. I have experimented a little bit with yoni eggs and have experienced some more healing using a yoni egg. Generally, you start with a rose quartz or a jade egg. I, for some reason like to take the more intense approach and I've been using a black onyx crystal yoni egg and that's really great for releasing some heavy emotions but I definitely felt really amazing using my yoni egg and that's yeah it's definitely been very healing But again, it's something that I'd love to learn more about and love to get someone on to talk all about that. But another another healing option, especially for sexual traumas, is using a healing egg. Something I've really struggled with this year is our inability to travel throughout this global lockdown. Because I have found that traveling has been very healing for me and again, like an activation So when I was 21, I traveled around Europe for a couple of weeks, for six weeks. Before I traveled, I felt shy and I felt like I cared what other people thought of me. So an example of this is I've always loved to sing and dance and I love music. And when I got my license, I loved just driving around and listening to music and singing in the car. When I would do this, if I would pull up to some traffic lights, I would stop singing because I didn't want the people at the traffic lights to see me. 
And then after I went through Europe, I just felt like I had experienced a transformation of some kind. And I just cared that little bit less about what other people thought of me. So now ever since then, I don't, I don't worry about that. I just do what I want to do. I can sing and dance in front of anyone just about and not be shy. And yeah, traveling for me released a lot of that sort of stuff. Now, I've briefly mentioned crystals with the yoni eggs, but utilizing crystals in the form of protecting my energy was a real game changer for me. So when I was told that I was an empath and that I had fairy blood, I was recommended to start using amethyst, carrying amethyst and wearing amethyst as a means of protection. And this was incredible for me. I felt so crazy. I was soaking up everyone else's energy constantly and then using amethyst crystal especially and again I do like black onyx in that form of protection as well but this had a dramatic impact on my energy. I could not do a episode about healing if I didn't mention landmark So again, I have done a whole episode on this because out of all of these things, my most profound healing was definitely Landmark. And I highly recommend everyone to do this. If you are on a healing journey, if you are focusing on healing, and especially if that healing is around the past, so the past in this lifetime, then you will get so much from Landmark. So check out that episode that I did around healing the past with landmark so singing and dancing i've mentioned it before but in the chakras singing has really healed my throat chakra in lots of ways so singing and dancing is like a beautiful free way that you can practice self-love and healing on yourself kundalini shake so this is a tantric practice or a practice that i learned in a tantric workshop it's a bit hard to explain on the podcast but more or less there's specific music and songs that activate the kundalini energy and the shake is starting from your pelvis and just sort of shaking and starting to shake your whole body This was really powerful for me just before I launched this podcast. I went through a real, just a couple of weeks of just being really low, being very moody. And throughout that time, the only thing, the only spiritual practices that I could really bring myself to do was journaling, of course, and this Kundalini shake. So at the end of the of the day, I'd put the music on and I would just shake it all out. So that's, yeah, can be really, really powerful for many things. Definitely if you want to activate that kundalini energy, but I found it quite releasing in lots of ways. Now I am planning on doing a whole episode on body talk, but I recently in the last maybe month or two did a body talk session with Regina And for me, this session was very much around womb healing. So again, still from the sexual traumas that I've been through, that's definitely been my main focus of healing for the past year or two, probably two years even, maybe even three. (laughs) I've definitely done a lot of healing around my womb space and that area just to release that trauma that I experienced And this womb healing, well, this body talk session was so, so powerful. I'm going to do a whole episode on this, so I won't go into too much of the detail, but I definitely felt a very dramatic shift within myself. I, I actually got my, my menstrual cycle early. So maybe a couple of days after this session, and that was definitely my body releasing And a big thing was I was still having flashbacks. So as I mentioned, not having sex has been very healing in that area for me. But then when I, when I started having sex again, I, I was still getting flashbacks here and there from my assault. 
and I have not had a flashback since my body talk session. So yeah, I'm so blown away by the body talk session and especially focus for me focusing on that womb healing. Now kinesiology, I feel like I mentioned kinesiology in the last episode, (laughs) but I am doing a whole episode on this. I'm very excited to be interviewing Alana Kay. So she's a kinesiologist. She has her own podcast, but very briefly, I'll mention that we, me and my son Presley did a lot of healing around our gut health using a kinesiologist. Another thing that I received healing around was money manifestation. I had some blockages around receiving money and I went and seen a kinesiologist for that. So after I was assaulted, my body responded by creating candida within my body. So I started getting candida and again went and seen a kinesiologist and did not have a problem after that. So kinesiology has been so amazing for me. So sound healing is something that I've only been recently introduced maybe for about a year now. I've I've had a few uh, sound healing sessions and I will link in the show notes for anyone local to me that wants to give this a go. Something really powerful about my sound healing session was I actually did uncover a repressed memory. So again, throughout this healing that I've been doing around my sexual traumas, when I received this sound healing, I, yeah, I received a a repressed memory and the sound healing is so beautiful and so non-invasive and amazing that to receive that memory that was pretty confronting, but because it was just such a beautiful energy and a beautiful surrounding by that space of the sound bath meditation, it was actually really beautiful and healing experience for me. So I highly recommend sound healing. I've mentioned before that simply becoming a mother was healing for me in lots of ways. I've spoken on the podcast around transformation of the mother. So when I had my son, Presley, he really, birthing him, awoken me to my intuitive gifts and this path that I was on in that aspect. And then when I had my daughter, birthing her awakened me and reawoken my sensuality and especially in more of a healthy way, as well as really awakening my authentic, fun-loving self. So, yeah, becoming a mother has just been so powerful for me and not something that we're really explained to about. Like there's so many traumas that can come along with that when, when women are not supported and not educated, when we're just pushed into fear fear like be careful of this and this might happen and you know there's so much trauma that can come from that but the transformation of going from maiden to mother is so powerful and something that be open to receiving support around that be open to receiving support by other women as I mentioned, those women circles and mother circles and just surrounding yourself with women that understand that process and that shift and that new stage in life. So that is my healing journey in a nutshell. I do hope that you enjoyed this episode. If there's anything that you'd like to ask more about, feel free to connect with me on Instagram. I will add my Instagram profile into the show notes so that you can follow me there and message me anytime. I hope that this episode has inspired you to try out some new healing modalities. Remember, if you enjoyed this episode, please follow this podcast. And for more interdimensional conversations on all things life, death, and everything in between, Remember, even if your wings have been clipped off, they can always regrow.